Okay, so today we're going to be talking about factoring trinomials, and we're going to be factoring x squared plus bx plus c. And we're going to be factoring trinomials because in order to solve a trinomial, one of the techniques you can use is to factor the trinomial and then set the factors equal to zero. So when we are factoring, or we're going to say if if x plus 3 times x plus 5 is equal to x squared plus 8x plus 15. Then the factors of the trinomial are x plus 3 and x plus 5. If we multiply these two binomials together to get this trinomial, then these binomials are the factors of the trinomial. Now, if you'll notice, and this is what's true about factoring trinomials, that if you take a positive 3 and you add it to positive 5, you get the positive 8. And if you take positive 3 and you multiply it by positive 5, you get positive 15. So when we're tr factoring trinomials, we're looking for the factors of this end constant. And the factors of this last term need to add up to the middle term, all right? So if we have, let's take r squared, and let's factor. We've got r squared plus 11r plus 24. Again, when you're factoring, the first thing we do is if the leading coefficient, the number in front of the R squared, if it's a 1, this rule works every time. The rule is we need two numbers that multiply to 24 and sum positive 11. Those are the two numbers we're looking for because we know we're going to have an R in one of our binomials and we're going to have an R in our second binomial. So we're looking for the second term in each binomial. So I have found that the easiest way to factor these trinomials is to go over on a clean spot on your paper and start listing the factors of 24. And I've always taught it and done it this way, that one times 24 gives me 24, doesn't it? All right, and then I take two. And what do I gotta multiply by two to get 24? 12. And then I take three. Does three go into 24? Yeah, it goes eight. And does four go into 24? Yes, it goes six. Well, once I get to the point where these two numbers are either the same as each other or there's only one number in between them, I'm done. I've listed all the factors, right? 1 and 24, 24 and 1. 2 and 12, 12 and 2. 3 and 8, 8 and 3. 4 and 6, 6 and 4. 5 doesn't go into 24 evenly. So then I'm looking for a combination of each of these sets of numbers that gives me an 11. Does 1 and 24 give me an 11? 
How about two and twelve? No. How about three and eight? Yeah, three plus eight gives me eleven. So those are my two factors. And it doesn't matter which order I put them in. It's positive three and it's positive eight. And the four and the six, what does that give me? Ten. All right, so now we want to look at this one other way. We just looked at all of these factors as being positive, right? So over here to the right, if we started changing the signs of this 1 and this 24, what could our result be? Out of a 1 and a 24, we can get a 24. But can't we also get a 23 and a 25? All right, if one of them is positive and one of them is negative, we can get the 23. And if one of them is positive, one of them is negative, we can get the 25. If they're both negative, we can get the 25. See that part of it? What about a 2 and a 12? 10 and 14, perfect. With the 3 and the 8, you can get a 5 and you can get the 11. And with a six and four, what can you get? Two and ten, depending on which signs you use, right? All right, very good. So let's try another one of these. Let's factor now p squared minus, no, let's keep them on plus. Bless you. Plus 7p plus 10. All right. So if it doesn't come right to you, then we start listing factors. And what are the factors of 10? 1 and 10. What else? 2 and 5. With a 1 and a 10, can we get a 7? No. We could get a 9 and we can get an 11. But we can't get a 7. And with a 2 and a 5, what can we get? We can get a 3 or a 7. So there's your factors. So since 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, and since both of these signs in this trinomial are positive, then both of your factors are positive. So we go P plus 2 times P plus 5. Questions? All right, so now let's factor x squared minus 11x plus 24. So we're looking for two values that add up to 11, negative 11, but they multiply to 24. So since we have a positive constant at the end, and we're going to have to have a negative somewhere, right? Because we've got a negative in the middle. Then both of our factors need to be negative. So if we take the 1 and the 24 again, can we ever get an 11? No, we can only get a 23 or a 25. So that doesn't work. The 2 and the 12. 2 and the 12 gives us a 10 or a 14, so it doesn't work. We're back to the 3 and the 8. 3 and 8. With a 3 and an 8, we can get a 5 or we can get an 11. But now, since they have to add up to negative 11, it's got to be a negative 3 and a negative 8. Because negative 3 plus negative 8 gives us negative 11. And negative 3 times negative 8 gives us positive 24. And just like any time that you're factoring, if you want to check your factors, you can just multiply them. And x minus 3 times x minus 8 needs to multiply to x squared minus 11x plus 24. All right, so let's try y squared. 
minus 6y plus 8. In our binomials, our first term is going to be y. Since our middle term is negative and our last term is positive, both factors need to be negative. And now we're looking for factors of 8. So we got 1 and 8, 2 and 4, and 3 doesn't go, and those are all the factors of 8. So with a 1 and an 8, can we get to a 6? We can get a 7 or we can get a 9, so this doesn't work. And with a 2 and a 4, we can get a 2 or a 6. So the 2 and the 4 work. So we got y minus 2 times y minus 4. Any questions on A on two negative factors? All right, so we've done two negative factors. We've done two positive factors. Now let's take a look at a positive and a negative factor. So let's factor... x squared plus 2x minus 15. We know again that our first term in each binomial is going to be x. If our end term is negative, then we have to have a positive and a negative factor. Because you can only multiply a positive times a negative to get a negative. So you need a positive factor and a negative factor. So let's list our factors of 15. We got 1 and 15. And 3 and 5. That's it. With a 1 and a 15, can you get to a 2? No. no, you can get to a 14 or you can get to a 16. So those don't work. And with a 3 and a 5, you can get to a 2 or to an 8. So those are your factors. You just need to be careful where you put them and which sign you put them with. If this middle term is positive, then the bigger factor needs to be positive. Because positive 5 plus negative 3 gives you the positive 2. And positive 5 times negative 3 gives you the negative 15. So the sign of this middle term determines the sign of the larger factor. Look at n squared plus 9n minus 36. Our first term in each binomial is going to be n. Middle term's positive, last term is negative. So we've got a positive and a negative. And then we're going to list the factors of 36. So we got 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9. Five doesn't go, and we got six and six. All right, so with a one and a 36, we would get a 35 or a 37. So those don't work. With a two and an 18, we would get a 16 or a 20. Those don't work. With a three and a 12, we can get a nine or a 15. And we're looking for a 9. So this, these are our factors. Our factors are 3 and 12, because 3 times 12 is 36. And positive 12 plus negative 3 gives us a positive 9. So the middle term is a positive, so our largest factor is positive, And our smaller factor is negative. So those are your two factors for
n squared plus 9n minus 36. All right, and let's do one more. Let's do c squared minus 4c minus 21. Our first term in each binomial is going to be c. We've got a negative term at the end, so we have a positive and a negative factor. And we're looking for the factors of 21. So 1 and 21 and 3 and 7. That is it. 3 and 7 will get you to a 4. Okay? 1 and 21 produce a 20 and a 22. So it doesn't work. 3 and 7 produce a 4 and a 10. So those work. Now, our middle term is negative. So our larger term, the 7, has to be negative, which makes the smaller term positive. Positive 3 times negative 7 equals negative 21. Positive 3 plus negative 7 equals negative 4. So those are your factors. All right, any questions on factoring those three types of trinomials? All right, then here's your practice problems for today.